Hello and welcome to Rockstar UK. In this episode, we're going to be installing our COSO gauge. Um, so, let's show you through the kit. So, in your kit of parts, you'll have the COSO gauge itself. I've just made this little bracket that you can see there out of aluminium because I'm going to be mounting mine in the same place as I did my uh, Trailtech Vapor. Um, you have the loom that's already um, wired in. you just got to terminate this end, which I will be going through in this video. Um, you have your handlebar mount which basically clips onto the back here. Uh, you also get these uh, screws and washers in the kit. You get your speed sensor, which is basically like a magnetic pickup. Um, and then you get your mounts and then these magnets, which you put into your rotor. Um, however, I'm not gonna be using this or this. Uh, you also get the piggyback connectors so you get the piggyback connectors as well um, but so instead of this I'm going to be using this which is the uh, the GPS speed uh, converter so basically this will be giving the speed sensor rather than the magnet um, I'll be showing how to set that up and what's involved in this kit so let's open that up and I'll show you what's in there Right, so, in this kit, you get your speed converter. So, this little button here is purely just for testing uh, and setup, which is all ooh, described in the little instruction leaflet. Um, pretty much, it, this section of it is plug and play. Um, so, as you can see here, it's already terminated off. You can't get these around the wrong way. Now, if you're using a different type of uh, COSO gauge, they give you this adapter lead, um, which is mainly for this. I don't even think we can see it on here. Oh, yep. So this is for a different end type, which we won't be using. So that can go to one side. You get a pack of cable ties. And in here is your GPS sensor. So this is actually a GPS modulator. Uh, which picks up the signals uh, basically it's stick on so you stick it the way you want it uh, you also get a spare one of those as well and this will be placed somewhere and I, I guess I'll just ratchet strap it somewhere but basically you've got this pl plug here which is already on the COSO gauge that will plug into this end and then this end will plug into that simple as that really straightforward um, then all you've got to do is set this to um, I believe it's six pulses um, because of the amount of magnets that you can have on the wheel you can have up to I think it's up to like six magnets on the rotor that'll give you obviously a more accurate signal than if you were using one or three um, so we'll set this to six I believe it says it in here actually um, bear me two ticks yes I'm wearing my pajama bottoms we're still in lockdown. Let me have a quick look. So these instructions are really straightforward. It details everything you need for this. Um, so it tells you about what, how to do it, turning it on, what you're supposed to experience. And ah, yeah, here it is. So you can see here it says to configure it to 6p so really straightforward and uh, let's crack on get the whole thing installed but I'm gonna take you step by step through the video um, I'm gonna literally wire the whole thing up so you can see how I've done it doesn't necessarily mean it's a how-to video it's just how I'm personally doing it so let's uh, let's get this mounted up first because I need to paint this bracket um, I've literally just drilled it off and got it slaved on so yeah let's go from there all right so after making the little bracket finished drilling it off and that 
I've sort of trial fitted it onto the bike. So took the battery box off. Um, if you remember in a previous video, I had the Trailtech Vapor um, mounted just below the battery box. Well, that's exactly where I'm going to be mounting this one. Um, so what I've done is just sort of put made a little L-shaped sort of bracket, drilled the holes off to match. Um, so yeah, it's basically in the same place. I'll show you now. So as you can see, it's a little bit dark in here because the lights, the lights up there. So the escort shadows it a little bit. But yeah, you can see the the metal plate just there. I think that's going to look rather smart. Uh, give me some speedo readings, that's for sure. Because obviously I've got nothing at the moment. Um, I think that'll be an ideal little place. So the loom literally just goes up the back. You can see the L-shaped bracket, and it just mounts to a, a single point and screw that I've got there. So yeah. Looking good. Let's crack on with the wiring next. Alright, so just painted up the little bracket, used a bit of etch primer and then some hammerite smooth. So yeah, that'll look good when it's done. So good morning. Today's another day. Uh, it's a beautiful day outside. A little bit chilly, but that's why I've got a hoodie on. Um, so bracket's been made. We painted it up, so that's ready for mounting the COSO gauge to the frame on the bike. Um, Next job for me is to get the petrol tank and restore it because as you can see there's a fair amount of like just surface rust on it. Um, there's no holes or anything. I will check it anyway. Um, so what I'm going to do is use uh, a drill attachment with a scotch brite pad and basically just clean up all of the surface corrosion on it. Um, these aren't that easy to get in the UK unless we order straight from the States. Um, so I am going to restore this one and the reason I'm using this one is because of the fuel sender unit. So uh, the COSO gauge as you may well know, um, if I just reach up here and try and pull this off the wall. So on the fuel tank you can actually fit the metropolitan fuel sender unit as you can see here it's got like a float in it I've done a video on this already when uh, when doing the red ruckus but I'll, I'll detail it in here so it's all in one video um, so we'll get to installing that as well but after we've cleaned and painted this tank um, from there we'll change the fuel, sen fuel sender unit um, and we've got some wiring to do as well I'm going to try and clean the wiring up quite quite a bit because um, I want to root it into my loom so that it's all really tidy as it goes up the frame because uh, I've got cable looming on there already. So yeah, let's get to cleaning up the tank. We're going to paint it with, um, I've got several tins of like black paint around here. Um, so yeah, let's uh, get to some cleaning. So, fuel tank. It's been painted, it's all in a gloss black. Oh, mind the head on there. I don't know if you can see it very well on the camera because it's so shiny. So, yeah, let's, um, once it's dry, change the fuel meter. What are you barking at? Huh? Stupid dog. So, once that's dry, we'll get it on the bike. Right, so those of you that have been here, as you know, Rockstar UK garage isn't very big. So, put the Escort outside, put the ruckus in, and what we're going to do now is basically start installing this. So, the little bracket I painted up yesterday, I fitted it, a little bit of Loctite, and that's ready to, to bolt on through that hole. So I'll get it bolted on, put it into position, and then we'll start with this end of wiring. With the amount of colours and stuff on there, it makes it a lot easier. And especially this one, already having a plug on it, you've only got to worry about all of those wires. I say only, but there's quite a few. Um, in the packet, you get these little red piggybacks. Now, I'm not a fan of these. 
However, I want to show you how to install it in accordance with the kit that you get. So I'll probably end up using these and just splicing these into the wires that it requires. Now, some of them actually are needed for power, ground, etc. Um, so we may need, especially for this, where this has got three wires on it, whereas the Honda Ruckus one's only got two, we will need to put some additional wires in. So let's uh, start the wiring process. So, we've got the Koso gauge mounted, it's nice and sturdy. Um, this is the wire which I've bent up and we're gonna run it basically into the battery box and then into all of this mess of a wiring. Um, this is my personal bike, it's not perfect. So, I've also got a lot more stuff crammed in here. So, right here is um, a horn which is actually an alarm um, which makes funny noises and stuff like that and it's just a bit more cheery than a horn but I've actually got the horn as well as you can see there for MOT purposes so I'm going to start splicing into this um, and showing you which wire goes to what so I'll get into that and then we'll start by changing the tank out so this is going to have to come out um, I'm going to have to take this off, uh, the, all of, basically all of this slot, even the bottom cowling because you can't get it out with it there. So let's get on to that and let's get on to wiring all that up. So I'm going to give you a rundown of what I've done so far. So Coso gauge is mounted, run the wires up this way, obviously I'm going to make it all nice and smart. So first of all I always start off with the power on these. So, as you come to the rat's nest that I've got here, you've got, on your ATR, this is an ATR harness, you've got these two, which is a, uh, a black and a green. That black and a green is actually the Speedo light um, power and ground. So you can utilize those to use as the Speedo or the, the Coso gauge power and ground. Um, the only additional one you've got to put in is a live that goes to the battery, which basically is your battery backup. Um, whereas the Trailtech Vapor itself has a battery actually built in the back of it. Uh, on this one, it actually uses the main main battery itself. So I've created a a fused um, holder, which will run round the back to this which is already terminated for the fuse um, so I have made a three pin plug All right. so in here you got black which goes to brown green which goes to black and then red will go to whatever color you put as your main power wire so I've done that like that all right so for the simplest bit you've got this cable that's already into the loom now I'm using the GPS converter system so you literally plug it into there um, you come with some supplied cable ties so I'm just putting it on the back of the CDI because it's got a quick access to the little button that you need and then this one follows down tuck the wires up in here and then I've mounted the GPS down in here so it's out the way um, and then just use the cable tie. It comes with a, an adhesive back, so that is in there actually, it wobbles the whole bike. And then that little cable tie strap will just make sure it's held to the frame. So that is pretty much the GPS bit done. All I've got to do is program it on the, the COSO gauge to run uh, six points, which is, if you looked at a rotor, it would be the six magnet points that you'd have on there. So that's the speedo bit done. If you are running the standard bit, which is the cable with the magnet pickup, you literally plug it into there, run your loom down to your wheel point, mount up the uh, magnet pickup as you see fit, and then literally on your rotor, you would just put the magnets in. Um, you don't need to adhesive them in, they hold themselves. So 
Next thing is wiring up all of these wires. Right, so the first wire in your functionals, um, if you read up on the COSO gauge, it's got some displays and stuff that it can give, like high beam, um, left and right turn signal. So let's get those wired in now. So we've done our, uh, done our main power. So let's have a look in here. So ATR harness, we're using the ATR harness, so I'll tell you these colors. So blue with a white tracer goes to the yellow. As you can see on this diagram, yellow is high beam. And then on the ATR harness, ATR harness, it's a blue with a white tracer. And then literally I'm using their piggyback terminals and you put the wire in, crimp them down, clip them up, job done. So let's move on to the next one. Right, so the next one, sorry, if you can see, the next one is the right turn signal. So on, let's get this unclipped so I can, well actually I don't need to. So ATR harness side, um, you want to find your light blue wire okay in focus so light blue wire and the dark blue from the COSO gauge again clip them and that should work so light blue and blue that's your right turn signal so the next one is your left turn signal and that is if I can focus it is orange to orange it's that simple orange to orange um so get that clipped in and then basically when you turn on the coso gauge it'll all light up as you can see so we've just wired up high beam so as you can see the indicator comes up so high beam indicator then you have right turn signal and left turn signal so that's all working good job all right so now we're coming up to the final section which is your um, fuel level now off your COSO gauge wiring this green one here is your fuel level now what you also need is a power and ground which all I've done is tapped off of the two wires that are coming um, come on, got focus on the COSO gauge. Well, COSO wiring because they are coming from the power source um, which we've made, and I've grabbed off the power source of those for for that. So what that will do then is I can then place that, run the lumens to where I want it, and down to there. Now I will tell you what these wires are and what they uh, what they go to shortly okay so the last part of the wiring is the fuel sender I've literally run it from the connector I made tucked it all in run it along my loom and then I'm gonna tuck it under here when I put my fuel tank in um, I just don't have the time at the moment to do this so I'll just want to finish the video off and show you how to finish off the wiring so on your connector you will have a yellow a green and a blue now green is ground uh, yellow goes to the green that was off the COSO gauge and then the blue is your power feed okay so that's pretty straightforward so obviously I made the red power feed which is what I plumbed into the COSO gauge and then a ground off the COSO gauge and then obviously the green wire goes to the yellow so that's the green off the COSO so hopefully that makes sense it's pretty straightforward um, if I turn it on you can see it loads up and the tank is showing empty at the moment um, obviously I've got to set the time, I've got to set the mile an hour and all that sort of stuff. Um, 
if I do indicators, it tells me that the indicator for that side's on, for that side, and high beam. So that's all working. If I turn that off, it turns off, which is how you want. If I turn the fuel tank over, so in theory it's showing it as full. It now shows the tank as full. So I know that's working. So there we go. You've installed your COSO gauge. So if you like that video and you found it helpful, um, please give it a thumbs up. It helps to grow the channel, but it also lets me know that I've done a good job in showing you how to do something. Um, now, that's not the tidiest of wiring. There are better ways to do it. You can splice them into the connectors properly. Um, you can even solder them and then get some heat shrink and terminate it nicely. Uh, I just wanted to show you because of what you get in the kit. Uh, obviously, as you saw, I did make some connectors and stuff like that. Um, you can buy those kits off of eBay for like eight pounds, which is probably about $10. They are worth their weight in gold. So do get some. Um, I don't use any special tools. All I use is a pair of like wire crimps um, and then I'll just fold, fold the little tabs over and give it a good squeeze. Now, that's all done. The only thing I've got left to do is actually put the fuel tank in. Uh, the reason I haven't done that yet is because I've got to take off my pegs, I've got to take off the fuel tank cover, I've got to take off the shroud um, at the bottom just so that I can pull the, the fuel tank out. So I'll get to that, I'll do that and in a couple of weeks or so I'll let you know if it's working all properly, which I've done a couple of these now and they've all been fine. So if you like the video please give it a thumbs up, like, share, subscribe, all of that good stuff and I'll see all you guys in the next video.